Should I forgive my ex? The quick answer is yes. I don't care if your ex is an exterminator, the extinguisher, the excommunicator. I don't care who your ex is. You must forgive your ex. And I tell you why you must forgive your ex. Because you deserve the freedom from your ex. As a matter of fact, you deserve the freedom from every single thought that has been holding you in bondage thus far in your life. And the only reason those thoughts are perpetuating, the only reason those thoughts are sticking around as long as they have is because you have not forgiven. Now, when I talk about forgiveness, I know a lot of folks start to tense up and cringe and feel all kinds of ways because they think forgiveness means letting that person back in to use you like a punching bag. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about letting that individual back into your life. What I'm talking about is releasing that individual from your psyche and releasing that individual from your emotional body, completely eradicating the story of that individual from your life so you can live in freedom. That's what forgiveness is. Forgiveness ain't this cute little thing that you do because somebody told you in your church or somebody told you in your synagogue it was good to do and it was nice to do because it says so in this book. That's not the type of forgiveness I'm talking about. The type of forgiveness I'm talking about is selfish. It is about you and you. You are the one who's benefiting from it because you are the one who's letting go of the things that are holding on to you. And they say, you know, holding on to non-forgiveness or holding on to a grudge is kind of like drinking poison and expecting somebody else to die. And that's real. But another version that I love of what, you know, non-forgiveness is, is throwing dust or throwing, uh, throwing, du- throwing dust into somebody else's face in the wind and expecting it not to come back into your eyes. Throwing that dust, phew, thinking you're doing something. Now, again, most of us feel so justified in our non-forgiveness. We feel justified in not letting that individual go. We feel that the more we hold on to them, the more they will suffer, right? We feel as if we are the vindicator of justice, as if we're doing something, you know, for, for our own right by holding on to that resentment, holding on to that bitterness, when in truth, all we're doing is toxifying our own bloodstream, literally. All we are doing is poisoning ourselves Each and every time we hold on to a thought about that person and the things that they did to us, they are still in absolute control of our lives. And as a matter of fact, they're in more control of our lives, even away from us, as long as they live in our headspace, as long as they live within our emotional space. Because as long as we hold on to them psychologically, as long as we hold on to them emotionally, they might as well be there doing that exact same thing over and over and over again. And the reason I'm so serious about this, so I'm so convicted about this is because I know what it is to hold on to somebody and have it destroy your entire life. I know what it is to hold on to somebody who didn't do me right and therefore holding on to that grudge only to give them all of my energy, only to continue to manifest that very same situation time and time again. For anybody who understands universal principle, universal law, very simple, law of attraction, we attract what we are, we attract what we emit. And each time that we hold on to an emotion that is one of resentment or bitterness, that's exactly what we're going to attract back into our life. More situations and circumstances to be bitter and resentful about. If you don't want to believe that, that's okay. You can continue to live with your head deep down in the sand and take responsibility for none of your life. But as long as you hold on to the energy or the emotion, energy in motion, of resentment, of bitterness, of anger, of hatred, you will continue to attract those situations and circumstances into your life. You find yourself in patterns where you get one narcissist after the other, one narcissist after the other, and you think to yourself, there must be just an influx of narcissists out here, right? Maybe there is, but I tell you what, the reason why we continue to attract the very same narcissist The reason why we continue to attract that very same personality type is because we are holding on to that personality. We are becoming the very thing that we hate. Hatred is energy. Hatred is one of the most powerful forces in the entire universe. Not next to love, though. Love eradicates all things. True love. I'm not talking about lovey-dovey, cuddly, cuddly type of love. I'm talking about real, sustained, universal principle love. But when we hold on to hatred, 
It is a focus and a fixation upon something. That's what hatred is. That's what true hatred is. It is a fixation, an obsession about something. And when you obsess about something, you give your entire undivided focus on that thing. And when you give your undivided focus on something, you will continue to attract and manifest from that very same thing. So if I am focused upon the goodness of life, Not about them or anybody else, just good things within my life. I will continue to attract good things within my life. I'm not saying attract them because I said it or because I wanted and desired. I mean, I truly embody it from an emotional state. But as long as I hold on to that ex, as long as I hold on to that individual, I will continue to perpetuate a a story, a narrative of my life that is based on resentment, that is based on hatred, on hatred. As long as I have that emotionally bound up, as long as I am repressing those emotions, continuing to pile them one on top of the other, because that's what happens. It's just like a cup. Every time that we feed our mind a hateful thought, a hateful emotion, And thoughts turn into emotions and emotions turn into the things that we do. So the more that we continue to pile up hatred on hatred, and that's what happens every time we're having thoughts and entertaining and engaging those thoughts of hatred and of resentment towards that person, which is what we're doing when we're not forgiving, when we're not letting go, when we're not accepting, acknowledging, and letting go. And we will get into the process of forgiveness. So I continue to pile up, pile up, pile up, pile up, pile up. Then the cup is going to reach a certain zenith. It's going to reach a point where it's going to start to flood, to overflow. And this ain't the cup runneth over in a good way. This cup runneth over with toxicity. This may manifest in physical ailments, in diseases. This may manifest itself within other relationships, manifest itself within our physical existence. That's what happens when we don't let go, when we continue to perpetuate the certain emotion, the certain mentality continuously. That's what happens when we don't forgive. We will find ourselves in a place of dis-ease, a lack of ease, a lack of harmony within your entire life. And you'll wonder why things aren't going right in your life. You'll blame it on that ex. You'll think it's because of what they did to you when in truth it's what you're doing to yourself right now. Now, I'm just trying to make sure my cup don't run it over like that. Now, what does forgiveness truly look like? What is forgiveness at its core, at its essence? Glad you asked. Forgiveness is first acknowledging and accepting what happened and how you felt about it, right? A lot of people have trouble with that part, right? They say, you know, I'm just going to forget about it. So they actually repress the emotions and those emotions will start to project at one point in their life. So you first have to acknowledge, yes, this happened to me. and Yes, I felt that way. It is real right? This is truly how I felt about it. And you don't have to do it from a place where you are replaying the situation time and time again, unless you believe that for you, that process works. Because I'm not the type of person who says everybody's cookie cutter. Everybody's got the same. You have an intuition that is to guide you through your own emotional healing process, your own healing process, period. So first you acknowledge and you accept. Most people stop at acknowledgement or acceptance and they think, oh, I'm done forgiving. No, 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 no. After acknowledging and accepting what it is that happened, then you make the conscious decision to actually look at it from a different perspective. So this was difficult for most people because we don't want to, we think that seeing the person as a human is going to take away from what they did to us. That's not true. Or they think that we have to bring them back to our life. That's not true. But one of those powerful exercises I've ever gone through time and time again is to see that this person was acting out of a place of hurt. This person was acting out of a place of brokenness and they are that broken person. It ain't my job to daggone fix them. It's not my responsibility to do anything about their situation, but it is my job to see that so I can have some sort of empathy in the situation for myself to say, I have found myself in broken places and doing things, right? And I would desire that same forgiveness from somebody because I didn't know any better. Therefore, you can let go a little more. So after that acceptance, acknowledgement, now you have the place where you view it from an outside uh, person's perspective, from a third person perspective, from a godly, a higher, a divine perspective, Right. And most people at that point, something snaps, something changes, something immediately will transform. However, I still want you to go through this next step. And this next step is making the conscious decision of transforming your mind. Now, this is just habitual. You have 
picked up the habit of you know, feeling some type of way about somebody. It's been the equivalent of eating cupcakes every day. Now you're going to eat broccoli, right? What you want to do is to actually start to consciously change the thoughts that you have. And you know what thoughts are best to, to, to change that circumstance. You only know what it is that you went through and what certain pain points that it hit. Only you know what the core of that hurt truly was. Because the reason why you know, most people, I'm not saying all, some people have traumatic, traumatic situations that they go through that inflicted by a person. But most of us are triggered by an ex. Like they pick at certain wounds that we have conscious or unconsciously. And basically it is our opportunity to look at the wounds that we have. So therefore it's our job to look at what it is that was basically being poked at. What is the wound that we had that this person might've opened up or exposed? And it is our job to then, first and foremost, to make a conscious decision, because the decision is first, a conscious decision that it matters so much to us to actually transform the way we think. Because the thoughts are the perpetuation of a pattern, right? That's where the person is still living within our mind. So it is like, literally in some cases, it is letting the person go in every thought. And most people say it's impossible to let go of a thought, it's impossible to control your thoughts, that's an absolute farce. That's a lie. That's not true. It is just that we are addicted to those thoughts. We are obsessed with that. It's like saying, I can't eat that broccoli. I have to eat the cupcake. No, you can pick the broccoli up. You can pick whatever the healthier thought is up. It just takes time and it takes intention. Not even time, just mostly intention and intensity, right? So if a thought comes up, I can choose to pick that thought up or I can choose another thought. That is my own autonomous free will as a being on this earth. I have the capability to pick the thoughts I want. It's just that I have not had an incentive or reason to pick another thought until this point in time, right? And then this last step, which I alluded to before, is truly looking at the wounds that were exposed during that relationship, during that circumstance, that situation, so I can begin to heal from that. But first, I must be willing to acknowledge what that true wound is, right? So in the beginning, we look at this, how they hurt me. This is what happened. This was the situation. But that last step is truly exposing what the true, the pain is. For some of us, it is a feeling of undeservedness, feeling of unworthiness, a feeling of, you know, insecurity or whatever it is. And then from there, and this one sounds cuckoo crazy, sound like I'm taking you to AA or something like that, but it is a most necessary aspect is you give that up. You surrender that aspect right? And you begin to see that if you are feeling insecure, if you feel that there is no security, like you're not safe in life, that there is a life force that is backing. There is a force that created us that is moving all of creation simultaneously, continuously. Without our doing, there's a sun that rises and sets and we don't have to pay for that. That same force that is doing that is also within us and is willing to guide us through life and is always guiding us through life. However, we oftentimes cut ourselves off from the very force, the very natural force that is trying to lead us to our greatest good in life. And so if this is you in this process right now, I want to be a part of that process with you. I want to be somebody who is a coach, a mentor, an accountability partner. And the only way I can do that is through coaching. Therefore, I have opened up my calendar to book a consultation. The first one's complimentary, just so we see if we complement, if we can resonate, if we're for one another, right? So if you want to book that call, make sure to click the link in the description below Find a time that works for you and I, and we will get on a call. We'll strategize. We'll see exactly where you are. Make this tangible for you so we can truly heal. That's the entire purpose of this. And if we are right for each other, then we can see if we can do one-on-one coaching or if we have a program that works best for you. However, this is my life's mission, my life's purpose to make sure that we are not staying stagnant within these unhealed places and spaces, that we are moving forward within our life, that we are healing from those wounds of old, that we are not staying within that same that same toxicity That has held us for too long, and instead we move forward with our existence into the fulfilled versions of who we were born to be. I appreciate you. I love you. Thank you. Peace.